Pages 43 and 44 in your lecture tutorial talk about how you can tell the difference between a chain of islands that was formed by a hotspot or by a convergent plate boundary. As usual, please try to do these problems before you see the answers that I'm about to show you. The tutorial begins by showing you a chain of islands, A, B, C, and D, in the ocean. And they talk about how these four islands could have two different origins. The first is that they might have formed as the plate moved over a hot spot from the mantle. The second is that they might have formed along a trench of a subduction zone. How would you know the difference? I'm going to blow up the first question, which is at the bottom of this page, so we can look at it a little more carefully. This shows characteristics of each of these different origins. So first of all, plate boundary. A hotspot volcano is not at a plate boundary. Now there's some exceptions like Iceland, but that's at a divergent plate boundary. Subduction zones, by definition, are convergent boundaries. Number of plates. Well, if there's no boundary in a hotspot volcano location, then you only have one plate. And of course, convergent boundaries involve two plates. Now here's where you can really find some clues about the origin, the age of the volcanoes. In a hotspot, the age changes along the chain of the volcanoes, whereas in a subduction zone, they're all the same age because they're all being produced at the same time. When it comes to which volcano in the chain is active, in a hotspot, you'd probably only have one active, such as the Big Island in Hawaii. However, along a subduction zone, they might all be active, like the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. There wouldn't be a seafloor feature associated with a hotspot volcano, but a subduction zone always has a trench. In terms of the eruption style, hotspots tend to be mafic, basalt, and produce relatively gentle eruptions. Subduction-related volcanoes tend to be andesite, stratovolcanoes, and those are quite explosive. So this is an important list of differences if you saw a chain of islands. Part two has you apply these concepts. They have a diagram on the top left that shows the ages of a series of volcanoes. How do you think these volcanic islands formed? Because the age changes as you move along the line, you would interpret these volcanic islands to have formed from a hotspot. Which arrow best shows the relative direction of the plate with the islands? Well, if the hotspot is over here right now, and these were previously over that hotspot, then this entire plate must be moving as shown in A. Finally, you have a friend who's worried about living near active volcanoes. They want to know if you would recommend that that friend move to island C. And your answer should be yes. If this is a hotspot chain of volcanoes, then over here on island C, volcanism is no longer active. On the next page, you see another series of islands, but this time they're active and they're all the same age. There's also an ocean trench parallel to the line of the islands. So how did these islands form? Well, these must have formed from subduction. Subduction is occurring and each of these islands is active. Which arrow best shows the relative direction that the plate with the islands on it is moving? The answer is C. And if you're a little confused by that, remember these two plates are moving towards each other at the trench. And so this is the relative direction. C is this arrow right here. Finally, you have a friend who's worried about living near active volcanoes. Would you recommend them living on volcanic island C? No, because these are active volcanoes. I hope that clarifies the difference between volcanic chains formed by hotspots and by convergent plate boundaries.